Yes, you read that right. The word rapture is not found anywhere throughout the Bible. But do you know what else? The word Bible is not mentioned anywhere in the Bible. The word Trinity is not mentioned anywhere in the Bible. The elements for these things are already there. But this might surprise you because the Bible was not written in English. So you're not going to find the word rapture. Then where did this word rapture come from? And how do we get the concept that the rapture is going to take place and then God's going to take his people out of the earth? Well, it comes from this place in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. If you have your Bibles, go there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting from verse 16, and it says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet, the call of God. First, the Christians who have died will be risen up from their graves. Then together with them, those who are still alive and remain on the earth shall be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. In verse 18, so encourage each other, not discourage. Encourage each other with these words. That phrase, to be caught up, that's what means rapture. The word that's there is in the, uh, in the Latin, rapio, and in the Greek, harpazo, which means to be caught up or to seize or to forcefully take. And is that found anywhere else in Scripture? Yes. Those words are found elsewhere in Scripture as well. If you're taking notes, I want you to read these at, on your own times. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Matthew 11, 13, 19. John chapter 6, 15. John 10, verse 12. John 10, verse 29. Acts 8, 39. Acts 23, 10. 2 Corinthians 12, 2. And 2 Corinthians 12, 4. Uh, Jude 1, 23. Revelations 12, 5. And there are many other places where I can talk to you about these words. Harpa, uh, harpazo and rapio, which are put into scripture. Rapture is not a new idea. The rapture was not invented by John Darby in the 1800s. The rapture is the next prophetic event on God's timeline. And that's what's going to take place. It is a timeless and soundless event that, as Jesus said, is going to take place in a twinkling of an eye. And in a twinkling of an eye, it's not enough time for you to get right before God. A twinkling of an eye is not enough time for you to put down that bottle. A twinkling of an eye is not enough time for you to kick that girl or kick that guy out of bed. And in a twinkling of an eye is not enough time for you to set, settle your accounts before a holy God. Jesus is coming and he's going to take his church. And it will happen in the twinkling of an eye. The Bible doesn't say that we will know the date of his arrival, but the Bible does say we will know the seasons in which he's going to come. And that season is upon us but the good news is the bible says in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 9 that we are not appointed unto wrath god spares his people from the wrath and the judgment that he's going to pour out on the entire earth why oh how convenient is that oh that god's just going to stare his people that's an american thing that's not an american thing when you read the old testament that's a foreshadowing of things to come jesus said in matthew chapter 24 that before the Son of Man approaches, it will be just like the days of Noah. What happened in Noah's day? There was an increase of sexual perversion, an increase of wickedness that was upon the face of the earth. And God told Noah, listen, I want you to build an ark and tell everybody that I'm going to judge this earth. So it took Noah over 100 years to build this ark. And he was telling everybody, a flood's going to come destroy the earth because God's going to judge it. And God spared every single person that was on that ark. But only Noah and his family obeyed. Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 24 that it will be just like the days of Lot before the Son of Man comes. What happened in Lot's day? God was going to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. But God sent an angel of the Lord towards Lot. And he said, Lot, I want you to tell everybody that's going to listen that I'm going to judge this place. And it's going to be burnt down into the ground. And anyone that's going to listen to you must be escorted out of the city. But people mocked him. People ridiculed him. They were just indulging in their drunkenness, indulging in their sin, indulging in their wickedness. And then God judged Sodom and Gomorrah. And the only people that listened was Lot, his children, and, and partially his wife. His wife got turned into a pillar of salt <laughs> because she disobeyed. 
It's not funny, but it partially is. But that's the rapture. There are several shadows and types of the rapture throughout Scripture. And the one congruent thing between all those messages and what's coming is that God always spares his children from wrath. And if you need to sell your counsel for a holy God, there's only one type of sin that he's not going to forgive, and that's unrepented of sin. The prerequisite has never changed. God said to be holy, for I am holy. For without holiness, no man can see the Father. And there's only one way to be right and holy before a holy God. And it's not by going to church. It's not by giving a certain amount of money. It's not by doing good works. Those are all good things. Those are nice deeds that you're doing in the flesh. Those are nice works that you're doing for a community. But God said, your righteousness is as filthy rags before the Father. You must do what is commanded to in Romans chapter 10. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Then ye shall be saved. And if you need to get right with God, I want you to click the link that's down in the description. I want to pray especially with you so you can settle your accounts before God and be ready when he's going to rapture his church. So I want you to click that video and I'll see you in the next video. God bless. Thank you for watching. And if you care about your spiritual growth, hit that subscribe button to follow more. Also, join me Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 9 p.m. New York time where I do live Bible studies. And since you've been impacted, and if it's in your heart to sow or partner with the ministry, description's down below. God bless you and see you in the next video.